and welcome to the Tarot Cottage. My name is Amy. I'm here with a pick a card reading for you. Um, I just want to welcome my beautiful returning subscribers as always. You guys are amazing. So thank you guys so much for your beautiful friendship. Thank you to everyone who has reached out to me for a personal reading on Etsy. Um, I just love getting a chance to get to know you more personally. So thank you guys so much for your faith in me. Um, thank you to all of the new subscribers this month as well. Please join us. Pull up a chair. We're going to get a little cozy today. We're going to have a little chat because we're all friends when we gather around my table today. And if you are new to the channel, or if you're just arriving here for the very first time today, please subscribe, get cozy, and drop yourself a comment below any of my readings this month because I do offer a chance to win a free reading for the, for the subscribers on my list. Drop me comments as a way of a thank you, as a way of a giving back to you guys for everything that you give me. So be sure to drop your comment. I will notify you via the comment section if you're chosen the winner, but I will make it very clear that it's me. It's not a scammer. I'll send you um, specific links or send you... Uh, specific instructions on how to get a hold of me so that we can get the ball rolling so be sure to do that and if you have recently um, dropped comments below please be sure to check your notifications because there may be one waiting there for me because I'm waiting to hear back from two of my most recent winners so be sure to check your notifications as well but for today's pick a card reading I am looking at a connection on your mind that you can't seem to shake and we're asking spirit the question today is it time to let go of this connection um, is this connection going to come back around? Is it time to release it? And if we do decide to release it, what are the consequences? And if we don't, what are the consequences? So what are the consequences of this connection in our life right now? Is it time for us to let it go? We have pi three piles to choose from. Pile number one here with the sun and the little orange butterfly. Pile two with the judgment and the red butterfly. And pile three with the justice and the purple butterfly. So whichever pile or piles are calling out to you, there may be messages waiting today. And my timestamps are listed below. I'm going to jump into pile number one. Again, today it's all about the connection on your mind. And should you let go of this connection? And what are the consequences? Pile number one. Hi, pile one. You were drawn to the orange butterfly or to the sun card. And this is your reading. Uh, should you let go of this connection? Is it time to release it? What are the consequences? What will happen if you do? Um, the sun is all about clarity, about abundance. You can see that half of the skull is gone. The bottom mandible is gone. So there's perhaps no contact completely in this connection at this time too. And maybe you feel like you have a lot still that needs to be said in this connection too. But the skull is a symbol of reality um, and some loss that you're experiencing in the present moment. They're also talking about following your intuition and maybe we're not following our intuition as strongly as we need to follow it in relation to this person or into this connection. So let's take a look here and see should pile one let go of the connection on their mind with the ten of cups is it time to release this connection? Is there more to come in this connection? We do have the death card coming out right now. We also have the seven of cups showing itself and the two of wands. And there's this feeling about already, like maybe you're exploring other options. Maybe you're not keeping yourself pigeonholed in one arena, but you're still holding space in your heart for this person. And they're talking about wisdom codes that you're sitting upon and options that you have right now. So you may have other options with other people, but there's still something about this person that you're still holding space for. You're still wondering about the future, whether or not they're going to return in some type of way to you. You have the five of cups and they are indicating, whoopsie daisy, on the floor, we have the three of swords. Back of the deck is the high priestess and we have the seven of swords. Now I have a very strong message coming through for you, pal one. And this message, I'm just grabbing a different deck here to clarify. This message um, may disappoint you because I do see the end of a cycle coming here too. And I do feel like, first of all, I feel like this might not come as a surprise to you because you're very intuitive. You may even be some type of spiritual teacher or somebody who's maybe going to become a spiritual teacher in some type of way. Like you're a very intuitive person and you have all of this wisdom sitting inside of you right now. This seven of swords is really speaking about your discernment, about your conflict that this person makes you feel inside and how sometimes this five of swords, you're like, we're holding on to something that we know perhaps has slipped away, but our ego just won't let us, won't let us let it go. It just won't let us let it go because of the pain that we're feeling and the regret and the longing that we have in our hearts. Um, some of you may wonder and ask yourself, how do I let this go when I have so much emotional energy? invested here how do i let this go 
how do i follow my intuition to release this connection when i don't know what's waiting for me in the unknown it's like this connection is familiar and it may be painful because it could be in disconnect right now or not in the very least it's not acting in the way that you want it to in your current human condition um, and you may ask yourself, you know, how am I going to do this? I haven't been able to accomplish the release. And what's waiting for me if I do? So it may be familiar, but it's not thriving. You have the Ace of Cups. And this Ace of Cups is supporting the Ten of Cups. And it's a beautiful teapot or a teacup. I think of rest and ease and healing. We have the Ace of Pentacles. The Five of Wands, supporting the Three of Wands. The Magician. And this is, you know, there's the Magician celebrating your unbirthday. And here's the Judgment. Here is the Six of Swords. And here is the Six of Wands. Now, they are really reflecting upon a huge collaboration in your life and how this has had a huge influence in your life, this person, this connection, and how you do feel like you're coming to a crossroads here. You may, again, you may feel like you're teetering on the edge of release anyway. And maybe this was just the sign from spirit that you needed to hear in order to execute that process because there is a fear of what's going to be waiting for us. It's like I'm worried that I won't find my person. If I let go of who I think my person is, what if I don't find them in the unknown? What they are saying is that what you can expect in the future with this release is a period of mourning, is this period of maybe even buyer's remorse when you step out into the world and enter into new connections, but that will be a temporary energy. All of these clouds, all of the pain, it's only temporary. And it may be the necessary cycle we have to go through to end some type of addiction almost because they're showing me withdrawal. It's like sometimes we avoid letting go of something that we're really attached to because we just don't want to go through that discomfort. It's painful to go through withdrawal. It makes us sick to our stomach. And, you know, there's just so, so much pain associated with it that we just want to placate how we feel. We want to feel good. But this judgment is a call to action. It's a call to reflect upon the imbalance that this connection has actually created so that you can go into something more abundant, into something victorious here with the Six of Wands, which is victory. And so they are talking about your intuition and how you've perhaps already been prompted to this release in this present moment, but maybe we're protecting it right now because we don't know what going through that archway is going to provide us. But they are speaking about healing, new emotional opportunities, um, even new opportunities towards clarity over this connection is waiting for you as well. And for me as a reader, I'm just going to pull a different deck here. For me as a reader, my first position card that goes down gives me a lot of information. And then the support that supports that, again, adds fuel to that information. And so they're really speaking about clarity, the pot of gold that you're actually waiting for, because this desire in your heart is what we all want and all it's what we all deserve, truly, is a sense of belonging, a sense of belonging. And so this is part of your outcome, part of the consequence of you sacrificing, because it does feel like a sacrifice for you, Pao Wan sacrificing your focus on this person um, to highlight the your own heart space in the present moment. And they are not negating how difficult this will be because I feel like there's still so much uncertainty between the two of you, so many things that are hanging in the balance, information that's hanging in the balance, but there's also empowerment waiting for you if you can break through. We have the King of Swords, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. And they're speaking about discernment for you that's coming in as a result as well. Authority and speaking that authority into being, like speaking that position into being. And then it lights up confidence in you. It starts to get you more focused upon your own build. We have the ooh, a page of pentacles and the hierophant. Oh, we have the page of wands and the seven of pentacles as well as a result of this action. We also have the eight of wands. And what's interesting to me is that the center of your reading is the three of wands, but we have this supported by the five. So that is the eight of wands. And this is a prompt for movement, action, giving in to that pressure uh, so that you can be propelled. So you may think that letting go is like a it's taking you two steps backwards, but it's actually propelling you forwards towards upgrades, towards new opportunities in life and love, towards explorations, and 
towards spiritual and physical development. Because this is the spiritual teacher in you that's developing, that's heightening in your intuition. And it's also commitment cycles that are going to come in for you ultimately. Commitment cycles in your love life that are giving, that are going to present themselves to you as well. The Seven of Swords also encourages us from our High Priestess perspective to stop looking in the background so that we can be forward facing in the momentum that is meant for us. Advice for pile number one, please. Should they make go of this connection? And what are the consequences waiting for them if they do? We have here free yourself. Porcupine innocence, free yourself of guilt and shame. It's like the little hedgehog. They say that you don't need to fear the unknown. You can go and meander through that forest unbothered because communicating this authority over your position is also creating a beautiful momentum for you in the future. And they, they're letting you know that on the other side of this release, there is clarity over the, the emotional loss. The mourning will come to an end and you'll feel more in control of your own human experience. We have accept your follies and find the teaching in them. And trust in your higher self, which is beautiful because we had your high priestess coming out. And the high priestess is trying to offer clarity over the situation and over the fear of loss that may be holding your focus on this connection at this time. They want you to know that you're intelligent, you're smart, and you can adapt to the changes that are happening. And that these adaptations are actually going to make you feel stronger and more secure. And, and a sense of belonging will be instilled in you after a period of rest and healing. Advice, please, for pile number one. You have here a note on love. It's time to seek different seasons and enter into the unknown. Because when love is the focus, foundation, and goal, blessed is the body, mind, and soul. And that's the consequence for you, pile one. You deserve to have a mind, body, and soul that feels like it's at peace, that feels like it belongs. And so they're encouraging you to seek different seasons at this time because you deserve it. Let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number one. Advice for pile number one in the bowl in relation to this connection that they need to release. We have the magician. We have the eight of pentacles and the knight of wands. The knight of wands is moving. The knight of wands still has the issues that all the other knights have. There still here's the ego speaking to it, but it says just get on the horse. We're going at we're going after this anyway. We're gonna move forward anyway. We have work to do. The eight of pentacles is about gain, gaining mastery over this or this situation that seems to be monopolizing our focus in the present moment and now the magician is asking us to call back anything that is monopolizing it so we can use all of that energy to create beautiful change in our future you could be a fire sign a leo aries sagittarius we have live we have h we have two of pentacles and W. They understand that some of you are going to go out into the world still kind of holding space for this person. And they just want you to know momentum is momentum so that that's okay. They're going to follow you down there. We also have a teddy bear. So there could be a lot of nostalgia surrounding this person from your past and your youth. And you know, when we, it's almost like we get indoctrinated into things when we're young, even connections, even to emotions. And so there's something very profound about this first love for you. Angels watching over you. Loyalty being tested, but also commitment cycles coming in for you as a result of the um, sort of sacrifice here. And bird flying, news on the way, new opportunities, new potential, specifically in the next couple of months for someone watching, the next three months. Pile number one, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates with you. If it does, please drop your comment below. I would love to get some words of encouragement back to you and it provides our beautiful community here an opportunity to provide um, support for you as well. So please drop your comments below, um, especially if you would like to be entered in for a chance to win a free reading with me. You can also check out my link for Etsy for a personal reading and that link is below. But I hope that you come back here and visit me at the Tarot Cottage and I hope you have a beautiful day. Hello, pile number two, you were drawn to the red butterfly and you are also drawn to the judgment card here and this is your reading is it time to release this connection should you let go of this connection and what are the consequences if you do um, the judgment card is all about a reflection tool it asks us to reflect and not to judge others but to judge our own journey to judge what is feeling imbalanced about this connection is it stealing our empowerment is it 
stopping momentum for us in some type of way? And if so, how can we make adjustments here? It also encourages us to reflect how we can make changes in this connection if that's possible as well to empower the opportunity or to empower the connection. So this is a card of thought. It really encourages us to go inward to that thought because that's where all of our power lies, wherever our focus is, our energy is, and we can create change just through that thought process to start the process in the beginning. So let's take a look and see how to let go of this connection on their mind what are the consequences if they choose to do so turn the light here to lighten it up you have the five of cups coming out i also saw the strength so leo energy you have the emperor We have the strength connected to the death. We have the seven of swords. We have the knight of cups. Back of the deck is the sun. And we have the eight of pentacles supporting the sun. So let's clarify this as we go forward. Is it time to let go of this connection? The Lovers, the Eight of Swords, support, supporting the Seven of Swords, please, Spirit, the Queen of Swords, the Ace of Cups, back of the deck is the Queen of Cups, and we have the Ten of Pentacles. Now, what's interesting about your spread how to is the fact that I feel like there are solutions that can be applied to the connection on your mind to create change. I feel like there is still the potential of more to come, but it's like we need honesty and assert, like we need to be assertive. There needs to be communication. There just needs to be a new effort applied to create more change. I don't feel like it's necessarily the cycle is completely over, even though we do have the, the death energy here in the center of your reading. There is this emphasis on strength and applying strength to create the rebirth energy, sacrificing something that we've applied and taking a stand against something else. So maybe we've been spending a lot of time reflecting upon what we don't have, but not finding solutions for that. And so the, the lover's energy is encouraging us to look for some solutions if there are any. And that's why we have the judgment starting out the, the process of this reading. I am dealing with the collective energy, so I have a lot of different energies floating in and out. But for someone watching, there is a really strong um, prompt to what solutions can we come up with. Maybe we can't rely on the other person for solutions. You know, we can't hope that another person will jump through the hoops of our expectation. But what we can do is we can ascertain what can I do to get more information, to get more clarity. It's going to require vulnerability though they're letting us know that it's going to require us really pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone and we may really need to gain mastery over that because the strength is here the eight of pentacles is here but there are i feel like there's a permanent love here in your heart too and i feel like there is a loyalty here that's still very very present but i think it's going to require adjustments in order to create change so this cycle doesn't feel completely over can we clarify the death please but i feel like there needs to be somebody taking a stand somebody pull it because I don't think the divine masculine here feels capable I don't think they not that they aren't capable but I don't think they feel capable but we can't worry about them right now we have to worry about what we can do to create change and so because they don't feel capable spirits asking you if you do do you feel capable to create more information more momentum more enlightenment we have the surrender because right now they say if we continue with the force that we're applying, there will be no change and we might as well release the connection because otherwise we're in stagnation. It's like our hands, somebody thinks that their hands are tied here, but their mind is all lit up. The crown is all lit up for a reason. And the reason that the crown gets lit up is to try to offer us enlightenment, offer us, offer us solutions. I feel like you're not ready to release it in the first place, Spirit says. We have the King of Wands. 
what are the consequences of speaking our truth here? We have the Three of Cups. I just saw the death cycle as well. I feel like reunions are possible in this connection, truthfully, Pao Tu. I feel like it's going to take work and somebody's going to have to really pull their bootstraps up and try to put any effort toward the goals in this situation. But new days are possible. It just requires clarity. It requires the full spectrum of the sun. Somebody maybe has their love inside of that cup, but the lid is on and we can't see what's in there. And so it's like we have to unload it. We have to let it out. Somebody has to offer the communion of peace here or a communion of information coming in to bring this connection to a crossroads. And as a consequence, there can be some type of reunion here, which will get the process started. Yeah, they're, they're emphasizing the Queen of Swords. You could be a, a Aquarius Libra Gemini, um, specifically Gemini energy here right now. And they're really talking about communication Somebody holding back. First of all, the emperor is here too. Communication. So Aries energy. It's like we have to take a stand. We've come to a crossroads, but it's like we're operating from this two of swords where our heart, place, heart space is blocked, our blinders are on, and our waves or our back is towards the, that emotion. So we can't create solutions because our back is also to that crescent moon, which is our intuition, which is guiding us to perhaps take some type of stand. There is an emphasis on being honest with ourselves and other people. So during this reflection process, that's a part of that, of being honest with ourselves first about, you know, what steps can I take? What are the obstacles? Are they surmountable? And then ultimately, if we come to that conclusion that they are surmountable, we have to extend that honesty to others in order to get the ball rolling. And the consequences could be newer opportunities new doorways that pa that open up and it provides this person on your mind it's like it passes the baton to them once you find your your voice and you speak out vulnerably it passes the baton to them and then the outcome is sort of out of your hands you get to take a step back and you get to breathe easy you get to exhale and observe what's going to happen next but there there could be more to come here pal too i don't feel like it's an over cycle Unless we surrender to it now, it's testing our strength. We can surrender to the death of this connection now. But Spirit says we're not ready to do that. We're still holding on. But it's going to require this Knight of Wands mentality. It's going to require action. And it's not that the Knight of Wands, and I said this earlier, it's not that the Knight of Wands is not affected by the ego. He is. He just says, get on the horse. We got to go anyway. There is perhaps further opportunity here available to you within the dynamics of this connection on your mind. But it's like somebody has to bring forward that offer. And it feels like these two trees that are circulating this card are like, it's. I just heard cr um, crown sharing or crown shyness, where it's like two people who are just afraid to reach out, afraid to touch each other, afraid to make that contact. Now, all of this is advice from your higher self and from your guides and angels. So they're not going to force you to take on this application of strength. They're just encouraging that reflection to start the process. And they'll help you with the prompts and triggers later. They want to talk to you about what's in your heart right now. Because new beginnings may be very possible. A change of seasons, though, is necessary. And they're also letting us know, too, that especially if there's been a significant delay here, the time doesn't wait for anyone and, and our tomorrows aren't necessarily promised to us because they're showing me the fleeting lifetime of the daffodil and how it blooms so beautifully. Almost looks like a trumpet too, doesn't it? And there's something significant that could have happened in June in regards to this connection for you because I just heard that song the month of June. We have Playfulness Elves. Flirtation. Now the... 15 does speak to attachment Capricorn energy. So this person could have perhaps been a Capricorn. So we have passages. You're walking through the passages of your transformation. And what I love is the beautiful red cloak. There's a red dress here as well. But it's all of her emotion that's keeping that dress stuck to her. You know, it's all of her emotion that's keeping her in this mindset when she's empowered and she's walking through those standing stones to see what's available to her. So I don't feel like the cycle is necessarily over. And I feel like there are solutions that can happen for you, Pau too. Of course, your guides and angels, again, are it's your empowerment that's going to walk through those standing stones. We have kindness. Take respite by your, the pond and be kind to yourself and other people. And that's what the respite is asking for with the judgment. It's asking for reflection. 
and being kind to yourself first. You're the very you're the focus of the movie right now. Being kind to yourself first and then extending that kindness to others. If your time, embrace the dewdrops of life before they disappear with the morning sun. And there's an emphasis on timing. Time waits for no one. It's like we're delaying, we're holding back, and we could lose the momentum or the opportunity of the momentum if we keep delaying as well. And inspire others and let nature be your greatest teacher and teach these inspirations to other people as well. Because under the most ordinary of stones is an undisturbed garden. So what you find with your vulnerability may very much surprise you. Advice for pile number two, please. They challenge you to unpack your mind. In meditation's grace, the soul can unwind. Breathe in, breathe out. It's time to let go of doubt. And that is their advice for you, pile two. That there could be more momentum here. And they will follow you down that rabbit hole if you choose to go seek it out. The sacred lotus, compassion in action, the chosen tool. I see now the lotus in your spirit's jewel. And they're saying that someone in this connect connection has to offer compassion to the other in the form of some type of clarity in this situation. Or things may remain stagnant. Let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number two. Please for pile two in the bowl. Eight of Pentacles, King of Cups. Yeah, they don't feel like the King of Pentacles here or the King of Cups is going to be putting in the effort that he needs to put in. It could be a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio that you're dealing with here. Um, there is this, it's like their heart space works against them and almost emotionally manipulates them into thinking that it's not possible or the energy is wasted or, or the risk isn't worth the reward. And so it's like somebody has to put in the effort. Somebody has to gain mastery over their own insecurities right this moment. Now, that's not to say that there aren't other obstacles or complications that we'll have to deal with, but there's still momentum that is possible here. But I feel like the masculine energy may not have what, what it takes in this moment to make it happen. We do have the morning shoe of the divine feminine sitting on its side with the education of the glasses. You could perhaps wear glasses or this person could as well. And the morning shoe is in movement. There is an aspect of morning here. We have D and D. We have two. We also have the king of swords, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini and 1999 on this penny. So that could be a long delay, but also communication, surrendering, and somebody who's afraid, specifically divine masculine energy, who's afraid to express themselves. I do feel like somebody's watching the other person here as well. They're saying that in order to gain clarity, we're going to have to tap into strength. There's an internet connection here or an unfinished cycle as well with the marble. Pile two, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates with you. If it does, please drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me. Be sure to hit your notification bell if you do so, so that I can notify you and we can get the ball rolling. You can also check out my link for Etsy for a personal reading if you feel called to, and that link is below as well. But I hope that you come and visit me at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope you have a great day. Hello, pile number three. You are drawn to the bluish purple um butterfly <laughs> or do the justice card and this is your reading is it time for you to let go of this connection and what are the consequences if you do um this justice energy speaks of libra energy so you could perhaps be an air sign or this person could be but it's actually a split between a heart and a and a mind so it's like being pulled in different directions between my logic and my heart space at this time as well and all of these beautiful red flowers i do think of like empowerment with the red energy so let's take a look here. It's like this connection both empowers you, but also steals some of the potential of the future. Like there's just this back and forth between the head and the heart. And this, this it feels like a fight that's going on here between the head and the heart. So should pile number three let go and release this connection? And what are the consequences if that happens? We have the Two of Swords coming out to start your reading. We have the High Priestess. I feel like you're a very intuitive person, but sometimes you fight against it. Like I think that you, sometimes you fight against your own intuition because your logic plays such a big role. You're a very smart, very intelligent person. 
but sometimes that intelligence it's like it fights with your own intuition and your heart space yeah there's the queen of cups it could be a water sign of pisces cancer scorpio and i feel like your head tells you maybe i should release but your heart says i can't and i keep hearing that song from olivia newton john hopelessly devoted to you there's the sun We have the emperor, and this is the this particular deck has both female and male emperors, and this is the female emperor with the justice. So again, Libra. And we have, I just saw the page of cups as well showing itself. Back of the deck is the three of wands, and we have the ace of swords. I'm going to clarify this as we go forward here. Is it time to release this connection, and what are the consequences if you do? I feel like there's this fear about releasing the connection and fearing that this person will fall out of love or won't feel it's like we gain so much from the sense of belonging to this connection that we're afraid of not having that sense of belonging. You have the four of wands. But they are acknowledging as well that if we were honest with ourselves, there's a hollowness that this connection also leaves as well because we're not in connection with them and we're not receiving what we truly deserve in the present moment. And this is creating a hollowness in us. And, and it's being intercepted by the great waves of emotion, but there's a hollowness in us that also sort of exists in the present moment. Leo energy, Aries energy as well. Oops. On the four, we have the Ten of Wands reversed. We have the Knight of Wands. I'm sorry, that wanted to go in the reverse. Oh, it is in reverse. <laughs> and we have the Seven of Swords. Back of the deck, we have the Magician supporting the Three of Wands. And we do have the Four of Cups coming in the reversal. And this is the crow tarot that is acting as the supports today. Now we have this message coming through from your higher self, even from your angels and guides coming through as well. They're hoping that you'll adopt a different perspective on this connection than what you've been applying right now, because they feel like you're sort of blocking out your own clarity and they are encouraging you to unload what doesn't belong to you anymore like there's an emphasis of releasing here and taking action upon your own goals and they say that there's this feeling about hesitating because because of our fear of that loss it's like it's intercepting or interrupting the clarity or the truth surrounding the connection itself and it's like we need to be critically honest with ourselves about the nature of what we can achieve in this connection and and what we are receiving in this connection they understand that this is a huge request to ask you to unload to go through a forgiveness cycle um, but they're also talking here about clarity that you already possess in relation to this connection like again you're a very intuitive person but you fight against it because you're also you're so smart you're so incredibly like textbook smart that it, it interferes with the emotional waves that you truly feel and all of these little her hair looks like a bunch of tentacles that are holding on to something from the past but the seahorse you know it wants to float away it wants to surrender to the flow but it needs to tap into the strength to do that your higher self is coming forward with a message about what you can anticipate here when it comes to allowing that ship to sail. You can see she's standing in this beautiful passageway with this, these red cloaks or these red curtains and it's about empowerment. They're talking about you walking through a passage of, of abundance. They're talking about you moving into more and deeper connections. And you taking a stand here, even though it's very difficult, is not just communicating, again, your ability to discern and listen to the notes of intuition, but it's also, it's also communicating how smart you actually are because you're applying that intelligence to the future situation. They want you to know that as a consequence here, you're probably going to look backwards a lot more. <laughs> when we first get the process going, 
It's like when we first are starting the process of release, it's like quitting anything that you're addicted to. It's like when you decide to quit smoking, you already get anxious. You haven't even started the process yet, but you're already getting anxious about that first day and, and you're already getting grouchy and you're already warning people in your life. It's like, I plan on quitting smoking on Monday, so just stay away from me. It's like there's already this preemptive anxiety that gets welled up, even with the thought of release. And they say that you can anticipate that. You absolutely can anticipate that. But this is a wave of emotion that will settle down. Because even here with the Three of Wands, this is about expansion. She's got her, she's holding that sailboat in her hand and her hand is on her hip, which means you've been waiting and waiting and waiting for change, perhaps having it perhaps hold you back. And now the High Priestess has put the ship down. She's allowing it to sail through because it's going to help you to gain mastery over that aspect. It's going to help you to call back the energy that has been eluding you. And here with the Ace of Swords, oh, there's the Nine of Cups. This is what your High Priestess wants you to know. They can't tell you exactly what's beyond that veil because it's a part of your beautiful journey and they want you to include yourself with that dance. But if we go down that rabbit hole, they're promising you abundance. They're saying good luck is on your side if you choose to walk into something more empowering. And there's this aspect about having to have the courage to change directions drastically because you thought that was your person, that the only person that was meant for you. But this is a wand. This is a passion energy that you're carrying with you that's stopping you from pursuing this four of wands. New emotional connections, partnerships, abundance, building a new foundation for yourself that feels untouchable. So your, your guides, your angels, your higher self is saying that part of the consequences of that release, which is very difficult because we can't get to the Ace of Swords unless we've gone through the whole cycle of the Ten of Swords, which is devastation and release and somebody who has had their heart transfixed upon something very profound. And that's a huge sacrifice, which is going to require your strength to execute. But if we were honest with ourselves in this moment, they say that it will empower you. It'll bring you to natural doorways of more abundance. It'll bring you to deepening connections. It'll bring you satisfaction that you've been waiting for. Her hand is on her hip too. And she's waiting for the satisfaction that's eluding her. And Spirit says they don't want you to wait anymore. They want you to, to achieve that goal. And so they're hoping for a different mindset. They feel like you're not ready yet 100%. But that's what these readings are meant to do. They're meant to trigger. They're meant to offer a little bit of a, a light or a little bit of a prompt for us to reflect upon so that we can choose which path we're ready for in the present moment. And our guides don't want to shove us down any path that we're not ready for, but sometimes they'll give us information that we need, not information that we want. And that's out of love. It's like, it's like when my daughter really asks for um, a cookie and I can't give her the cookie because I know she's going to be having a piece of cake that I'm going to surprise her with soon. It's like I have to say no. I have to be the grouch in that moment so that I can offer her something even better in the next breath. And that's what spirit wants you to know. But they also understand that you're in charge of this perspective. And there's a codependent attachment that exists here. But on the other side of that bridge is rebuild, is hope, is faith, is, is a reignition of, of abundance. And they are calling it a codependent attachment as well at this time. But they are also understanding that maybe you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet to, to completely release. We have here energy, number 17, fire spirit, Aquarius energy, redirection, refocus, healing as a result or consequence of this action. And your high priest is saying, I have opportunities coming in for you within the year within the year, perhaps even less amount of time, but also within those opportunities, as new things start to open up for you, as new prospects open up, as you see abundance start to roll in for you, you're still going to be influenced by that remembrance because they're showing you the poppy. So you're going to still remember, you're going to be going back and forth. It's going to be, it's like you're going to fall off the wagon a little bit and that's okay. We have here courage and you can see this is a beautiful, beautiful, house that they're preparing for you it's like making beautiful rooms or preparing a room in heaven in some type of aspect um, but it's about transformation it's about growth and having the courage to propel change or to influence change they know that this is not an easy request again leo energy very strong strength ancient oak spirit the strength but it opens up natural doorways 
back, back of the deck says new beginnings for you, pile three. Brand new beginnings for you. What are the consequences of letting go of this connection? Should they release this connection at this time? We have here, what do you need to release? And it's time to surrender to that release. Surrender to the divine. And that's the reflection aspect, the back and forth between your heart and your head right now. That's why that's happening in the present moment. That's why you're so conflicted. Because deep down, your high priestess knows what it needs. Your soul knows how to get home. You know, they know how to surrender to, to the flow. Um, but because we are competing, it's like our heart our emotional world is competing with our animal brain and we have to rise above that animal brain in order to tap into the awareness that allows us to experience this nine of cups, this emotional aspect of, of fulfillment in your life. And we may need to walk away with the eight of cups in order to achieve that goal. Back of the deck says, it is time to release any negativity. Eyes for pile number three, please, in regards to this connection. I'm also just really talking about transmuting energy that you've been, they've been waiting to see you transmute the energy into something useful. A cure for longing, love is happiness, a spark inside, live deliberately and choose boldly, and then you have arrived. They want you to live deliberately in the present moment. And if this connection propels you into the past, or if it, it creates an unease in your future prospects, then it's time to perhaps to exclude that from the present moment. We have silent skill. They challenge you to unpack your mind. In meditation's grace, your soul can unwind. Breathe in, breathe out, let go of doubt. And they say that you, it says another gateway is appearing in view and new life is unfolding with blessings to you. And that's what they're promising as a consequence in your future as well, pal three. You, you deserve to feel emotionally secure and a sense of belonging in your connections. Advice, please, for pile number three in the bowl. Eight of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, the King of Cups. There's, there's a, this was almost an exact configuration from another pile, but I feel like it was a very different message. Um, there is this aspect of gaining mastery and putting an effort towards doing what our heart space is telling us to do, um, having to turn our back towards our wave of emotion in order to accomplish this task. And so they know that you're not 100% ready in this moment to accomplish this release task. But this Knight of Wands will be ready and waiting for when you do feel that, that prompt. If and when you feel that prompt, I should say. In the bowl, we have the letter K and U. We have a little card. Let's see if there's anything on it. The King of Cups. So Pisces, Aquarius, Cancer. I'm sorry, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, we do have the the gray flat flat shell. I think of the high pre. Or I'm sorry, I think about the Empress, and I think about Virgo. So you could be a Virgo, perhaps. I also think about retreating to reflection, to ground ourselves to the present moment, and to face the fear of that next step. We have the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We also have the king, queen of pentacles, so in claiming your independence, honor the Sabbath day, and the queen of swords. It's like being truthful, being honest. The queen of swords is not afraid to cut people, places, and things out of her life that aren't serving her. We have the hanger, so putting things up in a closet, preparing for something for later. We have the star of Aquarius, but it's also a starfish. And so the starfish loses a limb as it you know, if it goes through the world and it loses its limb, it can regrow that limb. It's a long and laborious process, but I'm sure it journeys back to wholeness and it never realizes its own strength until it accomplishes that goal. Pile number three, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates with you. If it does, drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me. Uh, you can also check out my link for Etsy for a personal reading and that link is below as well. But I hope that you come back here and visit me at the Tarot Cottage and I hope you have a great day.